Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and call the uh, the Wednesday, September 28th, 2022 Nottingham Planning Board meeting to order. Um, before we begin the, the, the public hearings and everything, I'll go around the room, starting with Andrew Mark Wright. Jones, alternate. Robert Davies, alternate. Gary Anderson. John Morn. Edward Veal. Susan Mooney. Sherry Sandler. And Larry Haney, SRP Savers. Jumped right in. Ms. Jones will be seated in voting for Ms. Anderson tonight, and Mr. Davies will be voted in, uh, seated in voting for Mr. Uh, McKinnon tonight. Um, so we have a couple of items on the agenda. We'll take the cases uh, in order. Um, both of these are continuations of public hearings. Uh, the first is case number 22-009-SUB, uh, application from Robin Camo, requesting a two-lot subdivision, property located at 176 Stevens Hill Road, identified as tax map 49 lot 4, uh, and Stevens Hill Road is designated as a scenic road. Is there anybody? Uh, so the applicant uh, emailed me and asked to uh, continue until October 12th. October 12th? Okay. Um, Okay. Yeah. Um, so all I would recommend is any motion to continue that we continue to make sure that any del new deliverables are brought to us uh, at least one week prior for review. Mr. Chairman, I move to uh, continue case number 22-009-SUB to October 12th, uh, 7 p.m. A second. That's a motion by Mr. Anderson and a second by Ms. Mooney. Is there any further discussion on that? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, uh, motion carries 7-0. Um, and again, if anybody was here for that case, uh, no new notifications go out for butter notifications. It's, it would just be on the, uh, the agenda for October 12th. Um, so just keep an eye on that agenda, please. All right, uh, next item on the agenda is case number 22-011-SUB. That's an application from Jones and Beach Engineering on behalf of Jim Rosborough, requesting an 11 lot subdivision. The property is located on Moores Road, uh, identified as tax map 72 lot 13-1. All right, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Barry Geyer. I'm with Jones and Beach Engineers here for the applicant. Uh, this is a proposed 11 lot open space residential subdivision on Moores Road. Uh, at the la or since the last meeting, we did have a public or a site walk with the board and the public um, to review the site. Uh, the board asked specifically to review uh, an area of wetlands on the corner of Moore's Road. Uh, it took a couple weeks, but our wetland scientist w was able to get out there. Um, our wetland scientist on this is Jamie Long with GZA, and he confirmed that that area is not a wetland. So we didn't have time to, co to resubmit a complete package in a timely manner, but I did was able to put together um, a revised yield plan and a uh, C2. <coughs> Hopefully that we can look at that tonight and discuss and move the project ahead further. I know there won't be any decisions to be made, but we could at least review and discuss. Yep. Actually, I'm gonna give a look Yeah, sure, sure. Small one. Yep. So, Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Guyer, is this going to be projected on the? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, perfect. Thank you for the audience. I'll take the small one. Get over there. So at the last meeting, there were a couple questions regarding the yield plan. We thought we would update that and give you a look at our proposed yield plan. Um, we have updated to include the areas of steep slopes, which are shown with the gray hatch. And we've also included the uh, 30,000 square foot building envelopes. They're the darker, uh, kind of a striped hatch. Uh, we did revise the yield to uh, relocate one of the lots from Moore's Road to Jamsa Road. Uh, the area that was in question kind of in the corner of, of Moore's Road uh, is not wet, but we thought it, it made more sense to show it up off of Jamsa Road. So we also review, uh, revised the, the open space subdivision layout, C2, so specifically based upon some of the input from the board. And if you don't mind going to sheet C2. So 
So we did shift one of the lots from the corner of Moore's Road and add it to Jamsa. So we now have two lots off of Jamsa Crib. Um, we also reduce <clears throat> some of the lot sizes to more closely match the regulations. Uh, we will still be asking for a conditional use permit for the, I guess, oversized open space lot sizes. Uh, we also did receive road agent comments to the board. Um, basically, I have two comments. The first comment was regarding the stormwater calculations and culvert sizing. We don't typically complete stormwater calculations for single family residential where there is no road construction. So we would ask for board input on the uh, road agent's suggestion. And the second comment from the road agent was that he believes road improvements are warranted. Um, so we looked at it and by my count, there will be a, uh, about 46 homes that utilize Moore's Road. Um, per year subdivision regulations that would tip us basically from a minor to a major road, uh, local road, it's right in that area. Um, I think the cutoff was 40 and we're at 46 to go to a major. Uh, the town standards for a major or a minor road is 18 feet wide and a major road is 20 feet wide. Uh, the existing road by my measurement varies between 17 and 20 foot with the majority of, majority of it around 18 and actually a little bit over 18. Uh, as you guys know, the applicant recently completed upgrades to the road in order for it to be accepted by the Board of Selectmen. So if the board is requesting improvements per the uh, road agent's advice, then we kind of we're hoping to get more input as to what improvements are required if what that he thinks i actually <clears throat> emailed the road agent i didn't hear back yet so um i don't know if he has to be directed by the board or whatever so we we do need to know what improvements are would be required if if there are ones that are required and and uh, we need to determine what um, the applicants required required portion of that improvements would be we have also been in contact with the fire chief regarding the cisterns. I think after his discussion, our discussion was that we only needed one if we had one lot off of Jamsa and we would put it on Moore's Road. We actually kind of show it on this plan and in this location, kind of between the two sections of um, houses. Um, I do need to discuss with him if we put two houses off of Jamsa He's going to require a cistern up there as well. So I do have some more input um, to gain from him. We do have to go to Raymond um, for this project. Um, we're kind of caught in a quandary where they didn't think we had to notify a Butters, and then at the last minute they determined that we did. So we're submitting tomorrow for that, and we'll be on the next agenda. And that's for both Moore's Road and Jamsa? Well, they look at the access because our access is through Raymond right but for both roads right because yeah I don't know what they'll want to look at but yes yeah just want to make sure obviously that if it's been pushed on you that 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 they get notified that the notice goes out to both sides obviously because I know that the talk was a lot about Moore's Road but Jamps has also impacted since the access for those two are there so with that we can tackle anything that you the board would like to right thank you so I know these are the new um, tonight, so we obviously have not much of a chance to review them. Sure. It's live to us now, so if anything jumps out at anybody, um, please uh, speak towards that. I know in the minutes I had kind of like a list of items on the prior. Uh, is it possible to bring those up? Because I did not bring that with me tonight. Um, one of the questions before I know was the intermittent perennial stream wasn't shown on here um, and that would be impacted by our, our stream uh, overlay ordinance the in my mind it's somewhere near where that cistern is being proposed is that um, does that look like so the the wetland scientist didn't pick it up as intermittent so I will have him reevaluate you know there's specific criteria for that and make sure it meets it but it, it would be in the area of the basically the culvert that's coming down it's to the um i guess to the south of the existing culvert where the um 
cistern is going. Yeah, next to proposed lot eight, I believe, right between that and where the cistern is. It correct. I think that's shown on DES maps as well, and that's in a couple of ours. And just pull up the minutes just so we can kind of touch touch on a bunch of see if all the other items that we had kind of looked at. And so, so the reconfiguration, you know, I, I think you've addressed a lot of what we were hearing on the site walk. Um, you know, the access and putting a lot in between uh, what's currently lot eight and ten on map seventy two. Uh, putting an access in there and putting a house behind them, you know, I know that wasn't uh, looked upon very favorably, especially with the slope that was there. Um, so is that where you said the wetland signs just went back out and didn't see any wetlands? Yes, sir. That's where what we had talked about on the sidewalk. They went out and specifically double checked it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that assuages a lot of. Um, possible concern. I know there's still a proposed lot nine that would still be behind a house, but it looks like you've you factored the house kind of um, further back and away from as well as the well we proposed away from the um, the current houses. Yeah, and we think that they'll want to kind of look over the the uh, I want, don't want to call it a pond back there, the water back there, so they will probably orient it in such a manner. I think with those, if possible, um, it'd be great to just get like the proposed driveway locations um, staked out just because I know Jamps a trail, when you drive that, it's right after the kind of a curve and a hill. Um, so I'm not sure where those would be if, if a lot, proposal 11 is further, it seems like it's further away from that, that sight line um, issue. Just looking at the plans. Yeah, I think they're at the crest of that hill, so the sight line's about as good as it's going to get. But we can stake it out. Yeah, it just helps. That, that also helps the road agent kind of get, get an idea, that, or the building inspector too, if they're going to see run into a problem with uh, driveway permits um, when, when they come up. And it looks like on the yield plan, I know this was a concern before about it seemed like the yield might have been a bit high. Um, and it looks like you, this has been revisited. It looks like lot seven would only exist if there was a, a filling of wetlands. Um, and then also crossing uh, <coughs> steep slopes for the for the driveway. So that lot would still be, in my mind, a little bit problematic. Uh, I guess my take on that is, yes, there is a small area of wetland fill for that lot, but this is 11 lots that you're getting, no new road development, one area of small wetland impact. I mean, how often do we see that in Nottingham, where you get 11 lots for a very tiny, I mean, and we're not proposing the actual impact, but if it had to go as a standard lot or standard construction, um, that's a pretty small impact compared to most that you'll see for 11 lot subdivision. We'll, we'll open the public hearing in a minute. We're, we'll let the board uh, finish discussion, then we'll open the public hearing back up to get. Mm -hmm. Some comment. So it's just uh, if I, if you don't mind, I'll just touch upon the, the list that I had from before. So you've addressed. Uh, no, no, I can see it from here. From all building envelopes. Um, so it looks like you, you've gone through that. So we would just take a look at it again to make sure um, that that's there. You confirm your wetland setbacks, which I believe you, you just mentioned that um, has been redone. Again, there's no. We'd have to make sure whatever plans we get in front of us to, to, as we move forward uh, have that wetland scientist stamp on them. Uh, each 4K area has to have the two test pits, which um, 
I'm sure I know you had them on the prior so that would be just a, uh, an item for the next time uh, can you scroll down Kevin thanks that's enough uh, let's go change permit we'd have to talk about that uh, you've already confirmed I think you were going to add a note about the land uh, on the other opposite side, I think west side of Jamsa Trail, that you, you know was just proposed, kind of becomes part of the, the right away. Right away, yep. And then you were going to double check the calculations for the the open space to make sure that more than fifty percent was buildable. Uh, I think. I think you've done done that. And then, have you had a chance to meet with the uh, Nottingham Conservation Commission? We have now. We wanted to make sure we got the wetlands correct, and we double checked it. So, yeah, that the conditional use permit for the wetland buffer impact that we're proposing, and um, and meeting with the board, uh, the uh, Conservation Commission, is next on our agenda. In the grading and erosion plan, I think we generally have that as required. I can't remember if there was a waiver for that or not. Um, there's no stormwater structures intended at this time. No underground utilities would be required. Easements. Uh, we mentioned that. Can you scroll down a little bit more, Kevin? Please, thanks. Okay. Yeah, I think I think the, there's still a few items on there, but I think those are we've already talked about those. Is there any further discussion by the board, Mr. Chairman? I just I do have a question. I'm a little confused. I thought when we were on, went on the sidewalk, and according to the maps at that time, that there was only going to be one lot on Jamsa. Correct. At that that time, we were only proposing one lot on Jamsa. Okay. I'm just curious. Well, where, where, so where the change came about. Oh. The, the change kind of came because of the site walk, really, okay. um, because there was a, um, a, a good pushback from the abutters regarding that uh, lot that was in the corner, uh, basically of Moore's Road. Um, we may have to go back and propose that again, depending on what the fire chief indicates, because it's not worth putting a another cistern in on Jamsa to move that lot, but. If we can move that lot without having to put another cistern in and we can put it off of JAMSA, then I think that would be better for everyone concerned. So you just rule out sprinklers in the house, right? The fire chief will oftentimes, especially where there's on that side of things where it's two two proposed lots, usually the <clears throat> the way he's boarded prior uh, request was, you know, in lieu of a cistern, he requests that sprinklers be provided for the, for the home. Yeah, and we can look into that. Um, the applicant isn't going to be the builder so I'll have to discuss with him and see what he thinks about putting that restriction on and maybe for JAMSA that's a good alternative for than the sister well, you can put the expense of the homeowner exactly I was just wondering how we're looking at the wetlands in our driest season and determining that they're not there yeah. Did, you, did you want to speak towards that, Mr. Guy? I, I didn't catch it. Um, during, this is our driest season, and the scientist is out there looking at the wetlands. The, the season doesn't really matter for the wetland scientists. They look at the soils, the, ve the vegetation, and I'm not a wetland scientist, but uh, so they have to have both of those items to be um, a wetland. And the guy that's doing this for us is the, actually the guy that teaches everybody in the state how to do this so he's very well um, understands that the whole flooding issue in that area yeah and just because an area floods does not mean it's wetlands i mean i'm not saying that this area does or doesn't flood because i haven't been there when it was a wet air time but that doesn't make it a wetland it has to have you know certain criteria that are listed they double check that you know he went and did it once 
and we went back and double checked just to make sure and it's not a wet one. It would be advantageous to you or the builder as well to know if it floods in that area if you're going to put a house there and and right now we're not proposing to put a house there. That was more specifically the lot that had been proposed down the right corner. Correct. So back again where the, the very steep slope happened to be kind of the boundary of it. Um, so that one is, is that the one that okay. I'm sure. And, and now the proposed both of them proposed yield plan. There's nothing proposed over there as well as in the proposed proposed uh, open space version. You've removed that lot in lieu of placing it on JAMSA. And if I'm not mistaken, it's just a trail. No, it's a road. It's considered a road. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Jamsa was, I believe, accepted as a town road as well. Yeah, I think last year. As is. No, I remember correctly. I, so I had a question about the um, <clears throat> that leftover piece on the north side of Jamsa. Um, it'll be made part of the right of way. Right. That's our intent. So if it's part of the right of way um, and the town, it's now a town road, does that become town of land or who, who maintains that? Slipper? Just like any right of way, yeah. the road will still be maintained by the town. Uh -huh. um, and the right of way is, it's still a, a right of way. It's not necessary. And so it's owned by, well, in this case, if it was reverted back to private land, if the road was ever discontinued, it would all go back to the owners of basically the open space, the homeowner association in this case. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that answered your question. Um, I guess my question was more just about long-term maintenance of it. Um, you, know, you know, is it, is there anything that we, that the town needs to be concerned about or take ownership of in terms of like, um, you know, a log falls falls from within that area across the road, right? So well, it's a public road now, public so road the town owns it. Yep. Yeah. Um, if there becomes any drainage issues, that you know, pooling of water on, you know, that part of the land that's part of the right of way, right? That now I spill into the roadway. I kind of see your point, but I would think that the town having control of it of that area if it's if it is right away they have more control over that in okay. case there is those issues um we could you know give a 40 foot right away for jumps or 50 foot right away for jumps a trail and then that would create a couple of small parcels that could be included in the open space um i think that would be more confusing than just giving a right away to the town um but the, uh, it's not going to adversely impact the project either way it's kind of more of a what would the board like to see and I my thought on that as well was giving the, the town additional well, the right of way to the property line because um, the other road which I can't think off the top of my head the name Sachs. of it Sachs thank you um, because that is basically right on the property line if there was ever a realignment or something that wanted to happen with those two roads then they would have the right-of-way already to do that at least for on our side so that'll be will that be like a, a separate component of language separate from the open space because part of the open space subdivision is that the town council has to review the language I think I brought this up in the previous yep. conversation I think you addressed it but um, you know, I, I hadn't really thought about that piece. Is that going to be, is that something that will be captured in the same document or will it be a separate document? Uh, it would be when the deed for the right of way was granted to the town. It's just like any other right of way. And typically we don't even grant deeds now. It's just shown on the subdivision plans. Okay. So it would just be um, shown as a right of way on the subdivision plans. And then, well, the road's already accepted. So this is kind of, this is a really unique situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where we have a, ro a public road without a right of way. Um, I've never run into it before in 25 plus years. Um, 
So we are granting the right of way to the town that should have been granted before the road was accepted. So we kind of jumped steps. Now we're stepping back and saying, because we have the ability per the subdivision to do that, now we're just granting the actual right of way. Okay. So I have a question about the, the I, I don't, didn't see what you mentioned about the road agent and sending you something. Do, do you have that here? I, I do I have the letter? I actually do it. Uh, honestly, I don't know if I printed that one out. I printed the fire chiefs out, I believe. Oh no, I didn't print that one out. I don't no. Know if we have a um, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have that. Uh, I, well, anyway, you mentioned drainage, etc., and so I, I think there might be some valid points for what the road agent is bringing up there. But um, yeah, I, we 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 don't have that letter. Or yeah, and, know and what that information really is. The Kevin, <coughs> do you have the? Okay. Yeah, you did. So um, his his comment, and I'll paraphrase, was that there's 11 new houses and 11 new driveways, so that he thinks it would be appropriate for um, drainage to be reviewed and the culvert sizes to be evaluated. Um, like I said, we typically don't do that for a single family residential house without a road because we're not creating any new roads. Um, we are putting on new houses, new driveways, but so, but that's at the purview of the board to request it. And that's my feeling is that there's going to be, especially knowing the history of that road particularly there's going to be effect on that road and without looking at that so sure uh, that's that's why I'm it's it's kind of uh, emphasized for me and if we require and have it it kind of creates a baseline for existing in in you know in case there are adverse effects you know down the road after development you know goes in like you said the uh, applicant's not gonna be the one building you know it's even though it's not a new road it's just increase in impervious surface um, and depending on what happens with the driveways in all the other areas there I could see why the, there might be a benefit to have it looked at at least and, and, and addressed really at a time <sighs> I'm just going to read it. Does that work? That's great. If you can close, you can shrink. Oh, look at you. <laughs> Probably right. Close it. Hold on. There you go. There you go. I'm still going to read it at this. Okay. All right. So this is Sean, road agent. My, uh, my first glance at the plans and thoughts would be the 11 roofs being added. Uh, and possible paved driveways in the added watershed that this would create to the wetlands. I think a hydraulic system, I'm sorry, study that should be done if it already hasn't been and upgrades to existing culverts or adding more culverts should be looked at. I think road improvements will need to be made to handle added traffic. Current road conditions are fine for current conditions, but anything more than that would have road upgrades Oh, I should Thank you. So for that second part, you, you mentioned you know, we can definitely seek further feedback from the road agent on that about you know what kind of improvements and wh wh which areas are are being addressed to to, to help guide um, both us and, and you on that. <clears throat> And then the hydrologic study, I don't know if they mean that necessarily, or it sounds like they're talking more about an erosion, um, an erosion plan for that. I have um, a couple um, items of interest. Um, as a conservation commission person, I think that the commission would be interested in an alternative uh, driveway rather than having them asphalted, but having gravel driveways would, would allow for permeability 
of water to go into the soil before it reaches the road. My second comment is that I am um, looking at moving that lot that was on Moors over to Jamsa really was good, a, a good neighborly thing to do. So we didn't have a third house over there looming over the existing neighborhood. And how big are these lots, acre-wise? There's no indication. Um, I think you look at C2. It may be hard to read, but they're all, uh, well, they're mostly around forty to 45,000 square feet. Okay. Uh, there are a few that are bigger. Bigger, yeah. Um, eight and nine are bigger just to get um, the proper areas oh, down for here. construction. Uh, seven's a little bit larger because we do have the wetland finger in the front of the property and we have to get to the accessible area in the back of the property. Uh, we did try to reduce the size of them to uh, increase the size of the open space. I think we did a, a pretty good job of it, but 100 foot frontage with 25 foot setbacks create, you know, and the houses these days are at least 50 foot typically in, in width. Mm -hmm. So that limits you. You have to have you know front to back and you know expand it back. So I think we've tried to limit the size um, as much as possible while still giving the homeowner an opportunity to site their house. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. And with the lot sizing, uh, we'd have to go back and look and see if we have we can, if we can if our conditional use permit is allowed for lot sizing or if. Going above the max requires uh, would require a variance. I'd have to read back in the in the zoning ordinance to I see. Think, I think the the town was very far sighted with your open space. Yeah. And my reading of it is basically says you can change any of these requirements, um, but via a conditional use permit, and which I think is a great idea. Um, especially, it gives a lot of flexibility to the developer and to the uh, the builder as to what they can do and and allows the the board to really protect the sensitive areas that you do want to protect. Like I said, I just want to make sure we reread that and check it to make sure, because I don't want to guide you one way and then find out, oops, should have done the other way, or because they both have you know different yep. different levels of obviously cost and time for 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 you and for everybody else. Um, so, is there any other discussion? I mean, again, I think overall. This is an improvement. It keeps more of the open space contiguous. Uh, do I think it'd be great if it was reduced one lot, it's like eight and nine somehow, so that you got away from the wetlands over there and stayed away from being behind another house? Uh, you know, that'd be probably more ideal. But um, is this within our, our regs, um, most likely? So I don't know if it's been mentioned before or not, but um, on number 14, it does say the status of Jump uh, Trail and Raymond is still unknown. Is that a section of the road trail slash trail itself? So my surveyors have gone and, and tried to find as much information as they can on all these roads. Obviously, Moore's Road um, um, in Raymond they found to be a public road. JAMSA they weren't able to find any information on. So we're not certain, and it's only a small section that actually crosses the property line, or the, the town line before you hit Mountain Road. We're not certain, and maybe Raymond is more certain, the town, um, of who owns that section. And maybe nobody cared because it's so close to Mountain Road. Um, but. So that's going to be something that has to come up through Raymond. So that section is in Raymond with the uh, applicants before that board for access. Um, that's going to be one of the pieces that will have to be discussed on their part. But it is a valid, uh, valid thought. Because whoever's plowing it or maintaining it has to go through the mountain road anyway. There's no way. It, it, there's no way to stop. Which is going back to it's such a short distance that it and the plow truck doesn't lift up his plow and go turn around a mountain road and come back. It just doesn't do that. Could I suppose, but it doesn't. 
So would Raymond be responsible for plowing half of it and we plow the other half? Nope. <coughs> Raymond doesn't do nothing. But it was just mentioned they might be. Yes, well, we're just talking to... about that little section that's in Raymond, and I'm just saying that if the Nottingham is plowing jumps the trail, I can't see that they wouldn't just obviously be going through to Mountain Road and. What might be happening in practice doesn't change the fact that that part of the road is still in Raymond, and they their board has purview over that piece. Um, so that would be part of the. Again, based on state RSAs, anytime access to an area is from a town that is only accessed from another uh, another town, it has to go to that town's planning board for uh, for comment. Okay. So I would be interested to to find out <clears throat> how <clears throat> tomorrow night's meeting goes in in reference to that. You're on their agenda tomorrow. Not saying? not tomorrow, oh, but oh, I'm sorry. We're submitting tomorrow. I misunderstood. Yeah. And if, if there's no uh, further question on the board for, the, for now, I'll open the public hearing just to see if there's any uh, new comment. I know these plans are kind of fresh. Uh, obviously, we're going to see them tonight, but uh, I just request that if you're speaking uh, in favor of the application, come up first, uh, against, or just with questions, come up after. Just identify yourself, please, and um, direct all your questions, comments to the board, please. Oh, come, it, them, just we'll just open it up. <laughs> yeah, we'll open it up. <laughs> Good evening. I'm David Finn. I own 36 Moores Road, and I appreciate the opportunity to come here and speak. Um, <clears throat> spoken with a, a number of people. Um, unfortunately, Mr. Heyer was unable to be here tonight. He's gathered a lot of information. We've chatted a few times, but... Um, Someone that our group has consulted with suggests that we ask the board, with all due respect, uh, whether or not the gentleman uh, representing the petitioner is properly licensed and properly credentialed to be here making these assertions and conducting these analyses and presenting to this board. Okay, I don't know if there's anything more to that, but I can, when the applicant comes back up, I can just uh, let them respond to that. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, I do have uh, some comments that I'll be able to keep very brief because I think they're made moot by uh, the changes that I saw here, but, um, the, uh, but I can only work with what I saw in the public record which, which was out there today. So um, the, that corner lot, um, yeah, as, as I know everybody knows, the Nottingham Zoning Ordinance Article 2, Section C, uh, Subsection 2, Paragraph B, requires a 200-foot um, uh, right-of-way um, with certain exceptions. The maps that have been provided, including the yield plan and the, and the uh, uh, subdivision map, uh, show at most uh, 99.5 feet of uh, frontage for that, uh, for that particular uh, lot. Uh, on the yield plan, it had over 400 feet because it was basically horseshoe shaped and connecting to Moore's Road in two different places. Uh, but in no place does it say what the individual sections uh, were on the yield plan. As I said, this is uh, likely moot now with the changes that are, that are being filed. Uh, there is, someone might say that there is an exception um, in accordance with uh, Article 4, Section T, but it fails that exception, I believe, um, through the Zoning Ordinance, Article 4, Section T, Subsection 2, Paragraph B, um, which basically says the, uh, not basically, it says uh, the frontage of the lot to be subdivided must be less than 400 feet on a street complying with an HRSA and so on. Um, if greater than 400 feet, the lot does not qualify for backlot subdivision. Um, and that lot currently, um, lot 13-1 on tax map 72 has greater than 400 feet of frontage. So, as I said, this may be moot now, but if that lot does come back into play with the original design, you'll see me back here. Um, um, th 
I, I just wondered as well about the gifting of the uh, the land. I, um, gifts make me a little bit nervous sometimes, and I'm wondering uh, if there's any consideration about having it taken out of the tax base. I know that the two roads run very closely together. I've been in that neighborhood for well over 30 years, and actually the property line um, goes up and touches the apparent uh, right-of-way of Saks Road uh, right now. So. Um, that was just one concern that I had. And as far as any section of JAMSA or Moe's, Moore's uh, going through Raymond, it is in fact the only way to get into those houses. And it is in fact through Raymond, whether or not, a, um, with all due respect, whether or not a plow is lifted or not, I know that the same thing happens. Uh, there, there's like a mutual um, uh, arrangement that goes on because the same thing happens with other roads in other towns in our direction. So, um, okay. Um, now, also, just a couple of quick points. Uh, there is concern of the potential impact on road use. That's been brought up uh, before. Uh, adding 10 homes, uh, adding 11 homes means 20 plus vehicles. Nottingham portion of the road is a dirt road, which will require more maintenance to the increase. And when that road was, was made a town road, I remember uh, very specifically hearing um, someone on the board make reference to uh, at its current, that it's acceptable at its current use. Um, and this, uh, this will be uh, double its current use. Um, there is concern on potential impact on existing wells, aquifers, leach fields. Very happy to see uh, the Conservation Commission involved and, and other people. Uh, I, was, I was an officer of the Lake Improvement Association for many years, so um, and am very interested in um, the ecology of the area. Um, I was also chairman of the Economic Development Committee in Nottingham for a number of years. So I understand there needs to be a balance between development and, and uh, the ecology. Um, there will be loss of habitat. There has been recent loss of habitat on Saks Road with, um, in a completely separate project, but there is more and more pressure on, on the wildlife in the area. Um, new construction would entail removal of trees and other vegetation. Those of us who live downhill from those sites have concerns over new runoff uh, patterns, and I hear that that's being considered as well, and I appreciate that. Um, there is also concern uh, by current residents regarding lake access for new homeowners. There's a boat ramp at the far, it's not a boat ramp, uh, the far end of Moore Road, Moore's Road uh, dead ends at the water. Um, that section of the road was not part of uh, what the town agreed to uh, take, uh, but there, so there, there is concern over where the access will be. Um, as a past officer of the Rockledge Park Beaches Association, I know that there are a couple of strips of land where people in a certain collection of deeded areas um, have uh, right to pass uh, down to the water. And some of these are hardly bigger than a footpath. We're very concerned about uh, whether or not there are any plans for that. I know that's not something that uh, will come up in a planning board meeting, but just please know that the residents uh, have a lot more of con more to be concerned about and a lot more on their plate um, than what is obvious right here. So that's probably why you're seeing some emotions running a little high sometimes and more uh, um, and a fair amount of passion. Again, I appreciate the opportunity. Oh, uh, when, when can we expect to see those drawings available in the public record, the new drawings? These will usually come up, so what, <clears throat> we would ask the applicant to submit these electronically so that we could get them to the uh, land use clerk, and then we'll post them online. That usually takes... I just downloaded it, so I'll, have them. I'll be in touch, so I'll get it off the next day. Do you want to see the old ones? Ah, that's the number. That's the number. It's over here. Okay. Thank you. And the site walk notes that you had put up, are those going to be part of the public record, or were those... Uh, Personal working papers. No, they will be uh, if they're site walk notes. That, that we have draft minutes of the uh, the site walk. Um, we have a, a few sets of minutes that we are, are currently just draft for, but that will be uh, those will be posted once they're approved. Very right now they're available as draft, uh, but they're not online because they're a draft. We usually. Okay, I went through the site this afternoon. I didn't. 
there, yeah, they were okay. based on the case over a little bit behind on our uh, minutes, but um, <clears throat> you can email the land use clerk and he can at least get you the draft version of it. Okay, very good. And I do appreciate uh, the, all the volunteer work that goes into running this. So, yeah. Thank you. I'm going to have a notebook, so Just identify uh, I'm not first. playing games. I'm taking notes on my phone. Um, I'm Heather Iworski. I live at 104 Mountain Road in Nottingham. So right there where that plow truck turns around and doesn't get my driveway. Um, <laughs> all right. I have looked at all of the documents saved online. Um, the new documents were not posted, and I feel like legally they should have been before we had this public meeting. So there's definitely time to review so I can foresee a continuance in the future. Um, one of the documents that wasn't addressed was the Stratford Planning Commission. They did do a review. Um, they did recommend that the Lamprey River, I don't have it in front of me, but it's the Lamprey River Association or the Advisory people, Committee. Yes, that they were supposed to um, follow up on this and I'm not sure if that has happened if it's on the schedule what the timeline is on that I believe we sent the request to them okay um, we haven't heard anything apparently from them but we did send notification to them about it okay so the wetland study I haven't seen a formal wetland study I work with low wetland scientists probably almost every day there's always a study there's always a report there's always a map I would really like to see a copy of that um, I don't know if it was just that corner that your wetland scientists looked at, um, but ideally they look at that entire property um, because I walk down it almost every day and there's, there, it's all wetlands. I don't know what else to tell you. Um, it's, it's also dry right now, as Ms. Mooney pointed out, um, has rained a few times, but I, I mean, it's, it's easy to tell just with the vegetation and where the water runoff would be, whether it's dry or wet. It's, anyone could tell. Um, wildlife study, I haven't heard anything about that. Um, that kind of relates to wetlands, but more of a wildlife study of when you take down all of those trees, we don't have an excavation plan because they're only selling the lots to somebody else. So there's even a bigger hurdle after this is potentially approved. The big hurdle is who's going to buy this, um, who's going to build it, what are these houses going to look like, are they going to be sustainable, are they going to have to meet certain codes, are they going to have to keep a certain amount of trees. Um, I'm really worried about that and wildlife and of course that ties into erosion, well water. The hydrogeological study wasn't done, um, that was recommended, so I'm still waiting for that. Um, the uh, Rockingham Planning Commission didn't provide their input. I think it's weird that Nottingham is the Stratford Planning Commission, but I'm just curious. Raymond is the Rockingham Planning Commission. We're talking about Raymond and Nottingham. I would like their input. Um, let's see. Even a, um, there was there was talk about the small wetland having you know 11 lots and a small wetland impact. A small wetland, <laughs> a small impact if. It goes wide. I mean, if you're if you're affecting a small area, those animals or those microorganisms, anything living there, I mean, they just don't live in that little spot. Things rely on all of these square foot and these acres of wildlife that we actually have left in the world. Um, so I would, I just don't understand how it's not a big deal because it is. Um, the underground utilities, I think what I saw was underground utilities are required. So that's more excavation. These are hydric soils. Um, I know that there were soil pits, test pits, but I didn't see a soil survey. I looked on the web soil survey results. That's not always accurate online. I'd really like to see a soil scientist out there as well. Um, because that's just, I mean, you're digging how deep and disturbing it even more. Um, I'm also concerned about why are we moving lots and playing jigsaw? Why aren't we eliminating lots to make this a more sustainable and harmony kind of development? Yes, this gentleman owes this land. It's his land. I believe they have a right to do, you know, it's your land. 
but you have a land that is matured and it's a wetland. Say, like, embrace that. This property wasn't meant to be developed. And if it is going to be developed, you're lucky to get two lots out of it. I don't know how we're getting 11 lots out of it. If this is approved, I would be very disappointed in everyone in this town. It's ridiculous. Um, and the gentleman who owns the land, I don't know, he's not here, so he's hiding. Um, what else? What do I have? Sprinkler systems. So we have a cistern or sprinkler systems. We still didn't do that hydrogeological study. We know we're in a drought. We know well water levels are really low. That's obviously going to make an input impact, especially um, for either of those. Um, floodplain study. So there was talk about the flooding, and we don't we don't have that info. And I'm not talking about like the hundred year kind of floodplain, or I'm talking about just those houses, those people who are going to invest in these properties. That is not fair for anyone to come in here and then realize that they can barely do what their dream home that they imagined. Um, and yeah, so just closing, I think we should think about more sustainable goals for how we develop and construct. And I just don't foresee this being feasible for this town. I did not move into that property across the street because it was Manchester. I moved into it because of the wildlife, because it was walking distance to the lake, because it was peaceful, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of light pollution. I, I can only imagine the amount of light pollution we're going to get in our house when more traffic comes up JAMSA. Um, I, I mean, two new drivers, two, I, I can't. i totally against this. That's all I have to say. Yeah, you can, for a second, you're the second person that's mentioned flooding. Is there anywhere in particular on the plans that you've that that this is like being addressed towards that's obviously we have the the if we have a on your flood zone we, we know where the, that line is mm -hmm. is there any specific area on here that you're, you're like with that comments coming up uh, when I walk down JAMSA I'm not too familiar with Morse so I can't speak to that side but when I walk down JAMSA everywhere JAMSA road erodes it just erodes every year the, I mean, you can talk to the road agent or whoever's responsible for redoing that, but every year that road is redone, and every year that road degrades. And the water runs on each side of the road, I know, because my dogs like to drink that disgusting water that runs there, and it pools up on the sides. So there is flooding off of the road and the sides. I don't know exactly in these two properties without um, like a Google satellite image or knowing or doing a site walk, but there's, it definitely pulls up. Okay. There are times when Jamsa Trail is, uh, sections of it are partly submerged. Okay. All right. So. Okay. Thank you. That'd be, okay. so that, that we can go back to the road agent for. Thank you for that. Uh, if you, add, do, we'll just have you come up before you. Okay. It's the flooding part. Oh. On Moore's Road, where the stream goes under the road, it has overflowed and flooded that part of the road. All right, thank you. All right, and then I guess just one more thing. These two roads are essentially dead ends, so people are going to have to turn around. Delivery drivers are going to have to turn around. Mail's going to have to turn around. Um, you can't get through JAMSA legally and go to Saks. It's private property around that bend. So I, I can only imagine the people at the end of JAMSA Road are not going to be happy with everyone turning around in their driveway. But that's all I got to say. Thank, right, thank you. you. Thank you. Three other public comment. Just, if, just come on up to the table, please. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt you before with the flooding. Diane LaPate, I live at 34 Moores Road. Just a small question. If there is somebody on this board that is good friends with the landowner, should he or she be excused from any decisions made? Okay, uh, so I think the question is uh, excused or what we would call recusal. So there's specific, we have our own bylaws and rules of procedure regarding recusal, and then I believe there's state laws about it too. So in general, uh, it's almost always up to every individual on the board uh, whether or not they choose to recuse from a case or not. The times where it is generally 
really mandate is if they have a financial interest in something or a personal direct personal interest meaning you know it's their land things like that uh, we usually recuse other than that it's it's up to every um, every individual to make that personal choice uh, sometimes if someone has a specific item that could be considered or it might be construed as a conflict of interest they can voice it and and still stay on uh, to to address it or um, but there is really nothing there beyond beyond those pieces there that that we can do okay thank you thank you My name's Craig Porter. I live at 18 Moores Road. Probably the guy that's going to get hit the most. <laughs> I'm this lot. I'm going to have the house behind me. Uh, well, change are. things, so I have to change what I'm going to say a little bit. Um, but I still do have a. a, uh, a first of all, I'm not going to talk about the conservation aspect, but like I just asked you to pass those around give you an idea of what's on the property and what's out there. It's just one page per person. <laughs> um, first, I want to say thank you. I can't express how much I really appreciate the time and effort you're putting into this. Um, I'm not going to talk about the conservation aspect or why I live in Nottingham. I feel you all, I feel you already know why we all chose to live 20 miles from the nearest city in a town with limited or no takeout. Uh, <laughs> I would like to say that I landscape my yard to invite nature in. So I have three bird feeders, three bird paths, a large garden and an area of my yard I don't mow until August because turtles come up every year and lay their eggs in May and June. Uh, moving on to the other thing, I am a certified real estate appraiser and would like to comment on my opinion of what's going to happen to the value of the, well now they get rid of that lot, I'll say four homes. Uh, Numbers 18, 20, 22, and 24, possibly, are all going to be affected. Uh, I believe if we see any part of the home, except their driveways, we'll, even if we see just the driveways, we're going to take a 3 to 5% hit, financially. Uh, that's ten to $20,000. <laughs> if we see the roof of the home, in the rear, a five to seven hit, which could be twenty to thirty thousand. If we see windows of the home or any part of the first floor, that could be a fifteen to twenty percent hit in value. That's forty to sixty thousand dollars for three to four of us. Now, even if you don't believe my numbers, I don't think anyone sitting here is going to argue with me that the, we we are going to take some sort of little financial hit on this. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to edit it because you change things. <laughs> Basically, that's it. I, I, I do have a real concern. I realize they moved the house and the septic on lot nine behind me. But uh, I will say, I, I'd like to just say what I was going to say, and that is it appears too close. It is going to sit higher than my well and my neighbor's well, especially considering that there is already a seasonal underground stream that comes down through the property and possibly we'll go through their septic and into our wells. Now, we're all talking about this wetlands area right behind my house. I have a stream. I dug a hole trying to make a little pond just to stop it from coming into my backyard, which then went into my basement. I ended up, I couldn't stop it because the stream comes out under a rock. It, that's where it comes out, under <coughs> a big, huge rock. And it, I can't stop it, so I had to divert it. And now, every time it rains, not just, just a little rain. That's all it takes. It just takes, doesn't have to be a big flooding rain. You'll get a stream down my driveway and across the road. And I think when you guys did the walkthrough, you saw the little, it's kind of a speed bump now in front of my house for everybody to slow down. And it's because there is water going through there. Now, whether it's wetlands or just a stream, it's still water going through there. Uh, Anyway, I, I would just ask that you take another look at that before you approve that lot, because uh, I think that is a real problem. Sure. So you're talking about proposed lot on the uh, this revised by a proposed lot nine. It's by Map 72, Lot 5. Uh, is that? I can't see the numbers. I'm sorry. This lot here. Yeah. That nine.
where 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 is it that you said you witness the, the uh, like that stream or that water flow going from in regards to your lot? Is it to the to the southern side of it or the north? Uh, of my lot, it comes in from the north, from the back of the house, okay. and then it comes down the uh, on the right side, so the east side of the house. Okay, it comes right down my driveway. There's a okay. So between you and lot and the next lot over. Yes. Yeah. In the next house. Yeah. Yeah. Between eighteen and twenty. Uh, I'm pretty much done, but in closing, just like I say, I'm not trying to stop the 11 lots, but do believe that there are other site options to get all 11 lots without drastically affecting the value of anyone's home. Now, this is going to affect the value of at least the four of us right here. Um, and and I, what I would ask is, why, uh, why can't both lots be moved over to Jamsa? So it affects nobody. Yeah, because yeah, so on Jamsa Trail, there's no houses over there. I mean, it does affect the people at the end, the traffic, the beginning of their road, but it doesn't affect, no one's going to take a big hit like these four homes are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And again, I really appreciate all the time you guys put in. Any other uh, public comment? See, no, I'll uh, close the public hearing. Mr. Geyer, if you would mind come back to the table, I'll let you, uh, if you'd like to respond to any of that, feel, please feel free. So, first of all, I will say that I've been doing this about 25 years, and I have never had my credentials questioned, but I am a professional engineer licensed in the state of New Hampshire and Maine. Um, I have been doing it for a long time, and I do have the authorization of the applicant to do it. So, um, other than that, that's just a funny one on me, for me. Um, we have talked about the road use and improvements. We're going to get input, hopefully, from the uh, road agent. Um, I have not had any input from Stratford County the, or the regional. If you guys have if the town has received it, can it please be forwarded because we haven't received any input. Yeah. Uh, other than that, uh, we meet the town's requirements. We believe we meet the town's requirements for these lots, just like anybody else that wants to develop their lot in town. Um, we appreciate the input from the uh, butters, but uh, at the end of the day, if we meet the requirements in the town zoning, the lot gets approved, and that's just not our lot, that's anybody else's lot in town. If the public wants to change the, the zoning, they're more than happy to do that. Thank you. Is there a further uh, comment from the board? <clears throat> Um, can I just, I want to speak to the, the other Regional Planning Commission as a representative of the Stratford Regional Planning Commission. Um, as Barry pointed out, the, his application is not properly before their board yet, so there hasn't been anything for them to comment on. Other than the fact that they're aware of it, I have been in contact with my counterpart. Um, so when it's before their board, at that time, I presume that that person will give a same similar technical analysis that I'm required to do for when things are before your board. So there isn't anything that's been missed yet. It's just that it's not before the board. So as he said, it'll be before them or it'll be submitted shortly. It'll be on their agenda soon enough. And at that time, I imagine they'll comment. I mean, I, I'm speculating, but I presume that they will do something similar to what, what I did here. Um, it'll be different, but it'll be. Something. So just to clarify, Nottingham's planning board has recommended to the regional plan, the regional board that they look into this. And that's like the steps. We, we don't typically, unless we have um, the input from the town to go to the regional board and then input from the regional board to, to come and talk to them. So Right. So, all right. 
I should clarify, there are right. essentially two points of where they could come. The Regional Planning Commission, as an entity, now has standing in the same way and a butter has standing. And they could comment from that perspective. I have not heard anything from that. I don't know that they're planning to do that. However, they're also circuit rider, a staff member is a circuit rider in the same way I'm a circuit rider here for the town of Raymond. So the town of Raymond, well, not only had standing, but now also has um, a, an application before them to review. Correct. Not for the full breadth of an application the way we do. Theirs is only for access, but it is, it is a clear point of, you know, I don't want to say contention, but a, a point of discussion, we'll say. And I imagine that their staff planner for Raymond, who is Rockingham Regional Planning Commission. Precisely, yes, yeah, would make comments for their local application, not the DRI that was submitted to them. So yeah, okay, I guess there was a nuance there, but yes, you're right. I, I would expect it more from the Raymond Planning Board's perspective. Yeah, thank you for that clarification. Yeah, it, it, to the question, there was a question about, yes, we're in Rockham County. Uh, it was the, the town long ago uh, left the Rockham Planning Commission as our uh, planning commission and utilized Stratford Regional. I believe most of the input was that uh, most of the items that impact our town are more in line with the Stratford County region, given that we have Barrington, Lee, Northwood, all Stratford County. Uh, this one happens to be against uh, Raymond, which is Rockingham County. So that, that was a determination that was made quite a while ago uh, to utilize the services of Stratford Regional Planning Commission versus Rockingham Regional Planning Commission for our local uh, our local items. Um, so I know there was a couple of questions. So erosion setup and control plan. Uh, I could ask the I will ask the road agent for some clarification as to what improvements they're looking for uh, and how that erosion plan would assist. Uh, I think given the potential layout of the homes and the proximity of the of the impervious services or potential impervious services of driveways and building envelopes, um, you know, an erosion plan could be helpful to, to that. Uh, again, generally when driveways are installed, they have to be a negative grade from the road so that you know water is shutting down and going into the spilling into the roadway uh, a hydrogeologic study uh, the board could request that I would put it up to the board to uh, make a call on that if we're gonna require it or not just at that point to what end would I'm putting it out there to what end would a hydrogeological study what question are you asking the answer to before you determine um, if you want it or not um, the state will review the septic systems as well as the state subdivision um, the, which includes the well locations so if we meet the requirements of the state subdivision for 11 lots which on 48 acres I can guarantee you that we will meet that requirement um, so it's just a matter of what what's the question that the board would have the hydrogeological study answer if if the board decided to move that way I think we had any other points Did you remember any, any more player that I missed um, no, I, I don't have anything specific I mean it's what I, about the flooding into the the uh, between 19 and, and 20 going down that way he's got a constant flooding that goes between there Storm, storm want to run off and, and hydrologic studies or you know. maybe there's something that can be done to prevent that from oh so 19 to 20 way over here to mm -hmm. the, uh, from where this proposed development is I don't see that there's anything we could require because all of it's far away from if you're looking at map 72 lot 19 mm -hmm. to lot 20 I mean you can see that there's wetlands flagged <laughs> there now uh, so that seems to be. Uh, so we're talking excess from the top. So 
So any runoff that they have from their septic is going to go into the water system, into the surface water in the middle of the map there, right down into between 19 and 20, along with the water that's already going there. So they've got a leach field there, and that's all going to leach down that way. Well, I think the uh I think the the flow of this watershed area is from the west to the east me jams the trail through the beaver pond to the intermittent stream and then across i would believe uh could it could could there be ground hydrology or something else involved that would bring stuff to the north that's i can't speak towards that but but yeah, the way I look at it is it, all the all the development is clustered towards the southern side of the property. What's it? I don't know that there would be. So the hydro. Get it back to lot nineteen to twenty. The hydro soil that they're going to be doing on, that they're going to be testing on, will be which part of the land? It would usually be. Uh, I mean, the, the, the parcel as a whole that should to talk should and discuss parcels. that. Yeah. So that should be part of the parcels. The hydro inquiry. The yellow line goes right around 10 and 11. Right, the yellow is the, uh, yeah. the wetland setback. Right. So if we're talking about a hydro test, then that would have a lot to do with it. So if they're going to be out there testing, Yep. Uh, it, it, then obviously you'd want to, Mr. Geyer, proposal on 11, you want to shift that 4K area out of the, uh, out of that wetland setback. All the others look like they're outside of it. That one just got squished into it. Part of it anyway. Yeah, I'll, I'll clarify that. Number 11. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I think it's also helpful if if they're known where they are to show kind of where the existing wells are on the, the other lots. Uh, it helps, I think, identify kind of where leach fields might go and if there might be additional impact from, from those. And I know the road, um, there's going to be a road study. A road agent improvements for Jampa Trail because it's a dead end. So if fire trucks try to get down there, how are they gonna? It's, it's like there's no roundabout. Yeah, it'd be something we get for a but for the road agent and then sometimes the fire chief uh, on that if they're looking for more uh, improvement on that area. So again, we'll seek uh, the road agent's advice on those pieces. Discussion for the board. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to suggest that the um, applicant also go um, and ask the Natural Heritage Bureau for a wildlife assessment of the area, which is pretty standard for something this size and proximity to the lake. I also, just thinking off the top of my head, listening to that, the last um, abutter, 
that it might be possible to move lot nine over to Jamsa Trail between the two wetlands further down from 10 and 11. And that would ease up that area as well as far as encroachment on the existing neighborhood. Lot nine from Moores over to Jamsa. More to the north of the other two. Yep, this I know what you're talking thought. about. This um, is the thought. Yep, we'll, we'll, we'll evaluate it. Um, okay. So one thing by doing that, you one negative of it is uh, you potentially be breaking up the that contiguous area of the open space or segmenting that block a little bit more. And then Japsa Trail is obviously the the lesser improved of the two roads by far. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a much narrower road uh, than Moore's Road is. That was that was our intent is to try to keep as much traffic off of Jamsa as possible just because Moore's Road is in better shape and it has been somewhat improved recently. Yep. Yeah, again, I think this is a much improved plan. Again, I think if if you were, if one lot was to go away, be, you know, and then lot eight and nine, somehow, you know, the buildable lot area kind of stayed away from the current lot, I think it, that would give you a little more setback away from the, the wetlands and the, the existing houses. I think it would be a little bit more uh, amenable to everybody. But like you said, if you know, we have to look at the yield and consider that as well, which we have to go back through and take a look at the, the revised yield plan. It does make sure everything uh, matches up there. Uh, have you approached anybody about who's gonna uh, who's gonna hold the easement? For the open space, uh, we our intent is for the homeowners association to hold the easement for the open space. Okay. okay. Is that doable? I'm not as familiar. I always thought it had to be a third party. That's one of the options in okay. the that, open that space. That would be fine. Yeah. Okay. So the conservation um, commission's next meeting because of Columbus Day falling, falling on the second Tuesday of October is now scheduled for the 17th of October. And you would contact Mr. Sam Demerit, who's in the room tonight. We will do that. I'm sure his information's on the website. Yes, contact him, yeah. Kevin could help. Yeah, the page. Thank you. All right, so we have a. Uh, I just want to circle back to something real quick. Are, are we anticipating uh, impact to the wetland for the shared drive, shared access point with six and seven, lots six and seven? It's wetland buffer impact, not wetland impact. Okay. So a conditional use permit is not. No, I believe a conditional use permit is required for buffer impacts. Okay. I haven't filed it yet. I actually have it filled out. I okay, just haven't submitted it yet. Yeah. Okay. So I have three conditional use permits we will be submitting. That's one of them. The, um, we talked about it on the first meeting, the re removal of the 100-foot vegetative buffer for the exterior of the project, and then the lot sizes. I would just emphasize again that that drainage analysis, no matter what happens with lot nine, it gets moved or not. I think that's definitely. Uh, and it's, it's at the purview of the board. So if the majority of the board agrees that we need to do a drainage analysis, then that's what we'll do. So. Yeah, I guess, Mr. Harris, if, if that's something, yeah, if you would like to make a motion towards something like that, we could uh, put it to a vote. So I would, uh, Mr. Chairman, see if I get to the right pages. <laughs> uh, so we uh, require the applicant to do a drainage analysis 
for uh, application 22-011-SUB. I second. Uh, motion by Mr. Anderson, uh, second by Ms. Sadler. Is there any further discussion on that? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, uh, motion carries 7-0. So obviously, there's a you want to get before the conservation commission for their input, uh, and then it'll be back before us again. So we'd be looking at the uh, 26th of December, oh, October. Yes. Sorry, what day was that? October 26. Yeah, would be yes. the next one after the con con. That also allows a uh, you know, comment to come in to us from, from them. Yeah, and if any input we can get from the um, the road agent as to, I know we still have to discuss with the board, but getting his input is, is critical. Yep. I mean, it could go from a, a highway to change something here and there. Sure. So that's a big difference. Yeah, we'll reach out uh, and request if you could clarify the comments uh, for that. Yep. And then we can reach back out to Lamper River Advisory Committee to see if they do have any comments and just you know, put a deadline on it so that we're not just uh, sitting there waiting for that too. And then obviously any discussion that, uh, or decisions that are made by Raymond, I'm sure they'll forward to us. If we just want to make sure we get that, hopefully timely as well, so we can review everything. And then uh, the potential language for the easement the conservation easement part of it the yeah yeah we easement. need i need to get, you, get you the homeowners the, association and the uh, yes we have to get that to the uh to legal for yep for review yeah get into budget season i'm sure their their time gets gets uh take it up and i i know you had stated that you know the language with regards to the right-of-way is going to be just on the plans won't actually appear as its own deed or is it, that doesn't really get done typically it can i mean we can write a deed for it i don't know i don't want to speak for you know town council i don't, I don't know how nottingham does things i actually don't even know well enough to even speculate we can reach out to the select board on that to see if they prefer to see that because usually if it was an easement like a deed of easement or something in the town the select board has to accept it we can't accept land or anything like that on behalf of the town where it's a right of way a different different scenario we could still reach out and say this this has been proposed please provide comment if you sure. have any yeah i'm anticipating they would prefer that we give them a right away it's just a matter of how much i guess yeah. Yeah. well just yeah okay i guess you'll have to react after we find out what that answer is <clears throat> i want to see i want someone to see that language whether it's on the plan or whether it's in a separate document. Sure. So I guess you can't provide us anything until they find out. You know what to provide. So I guess it's kind of a moot point at this juncture. We can follow up on that part. Okay. Can I ask a question? I'll allow one more question, sure. I, I just want to know why there will be a homeowners association. It's required for uh, open space subdivisions because of the fact that the common land, the open space, is uh, is owed still by the what would be potentially now eleven homeowners. Okay. It'd be deed restricted, and restricted for development and things like that. Um, but the the there there comes cost with with that as well for maintenance and review. Uh, like all, some of the other parcels in town, it's some our conservation commission monitors. Others, it's Bear Paw Regional Greenways or South, Southeast Land Trust that uh, monitors to make sure that they're still within compliance of of the uh, open space rules. And if I spoke wrong, someone would correct me, please. But you're welcome. All right. So a motion to continue to October 26th at 7 p.m. would be uh, in order. Mr. Chair, I'm, I move that we continue. Case number 22-011-SUB to October 26 at 7 p.m. I second. That's a motion by Ms. Mooney, a second by Ms. Sandler. Is there any further discussion? Uh, the only discussion by me is obviously any new deliverables. Uh, please have those uh, at least a week ahead of time uh, to the ladies' clerk. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, motion carries 7-0. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Geyer. Thank you, everybody that was here tonight for this. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody ever to step out, and I was gonna go blow my house. We'll jump back into the agenda. Kevin, uh, I'll make, did, you, did you get copies of both of these? Uh, the handouts? <coughs> Anybody else? Next on the uh, agenda is that that's all our public hearings. Um, we had a site plan subdivision application changes uh, for review. Uh, Mr. Haney had taken quite a bit of time to update our, our applications as we requested um, and sent those out prior to the last meeting. What we're trying to do is obviously right now we kind of have, uh, we kind of use it's like a hybrid, which isn't great because they're, they're different. Um, so we're just proposing to create new applications so that we make it clear for applicants as well as st uh, staff and the boards uh, when we are reviewing these. So, Mr. Haney, anything you wanted to particularly mention about, about these, I appreciate you taking the time to, to do that. Uh, no, no problem at all. I think it was, I think it was a healthy thing to do. Um, I think it's just going to make things a little bit easier for everyone um, in one second installing here so can, uh, so well, all right so two of the things one is uh we did talk about taking the fee schedule out so that was his own separate document um so that would be one of the changes the other big change was adding uh just requesting some kind of narrative um All right. Um, as you mentioned, the big thing is separating out site, site plan review uh, from subdivision. Yep. Um, and then adding, adding or taking out the, the, the fee requirements and then uh, also um, adding a narrative section. Uh, beyond that, there was a lot of clarification stuff. Uh, just kind of make it very clear, like here are the documents that you need to submit. And saying, we, oh, we reduced the number of, of copies as well, and said that everyone does need to require, uh, everyone does need to provide uh, a digital uh, copy as well for Kevin. Uh, for our files, but then also circulation. Um, I made the butter list a little bit bigger, um, added more space for that. Made another change. What was it? Uh, oh, we made uh, you know a little more space for requests for waivers, um, and then you know, include set, putting it on the other side as well. Um, this is just a little bit more clear because it puts it as a table, um, so it's easy for us to find. We know what they're looking for, what the request is. Uh, the application checklist was cleaned up a little bit. Um, there was some, because we had, again, two applications in one, there was some, you know, it, it, it wasn't clear. Like, if I even I was reading it, it just didn't look clear. Um, uh, so that was, you know, a big change there. And I went through each individual, each one, and 
I just maybe made some wordsmithing edits to, again, make it clear, make it read more intuitively for whoever might be going through it. So those are, you know, that's all the changes basically. Um, as I said, the, the major ones were really just separating them out, asking for the summary, pulling the fee schedule out, and then you know, making a lot of these formatting changes really. Uh, just try to use consistent language between all of them because like we talk about an owner, an applicant, and then whoever is you know, coming before us, like Barry, right? So who's gonna be speaking? So who should I be communicating to? Who, who should Kevin be communicating to? Um, those kinds of things. Okay. So that's 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 the summary of it. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. If you saw something that jumped out at you, um, there's usually a reason for it. Um, but uh, you know, it gets time. No, I like the the narrative. Uh, I like that was one of the items we've talked about for a while. Um, the only thing I was going to say, we could include a verbiage in there if we feel like we need it uh, as to, you know, if, if more space is needed, please attach on a separate. Oh, uh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the abutters list, instead of saying print three address labels, I'd, I'd say, uh, instead of print, I'd say include or must include three address labels. But they know that they have to, uh, that's not upon the applicant to do that. Print three labels. It says print three labels right now. Three address. Again, that's super minor, but uh, just up top. I'm sorry. What does it say? What do you want it to change? At the very top, right there. See so where it says print three address labels. Yeah. I don't. Know if, I just want to make sure it's strongly worded that that's. <laughs> maybe we don't run into a problem with it, but that's the applicant's responsibility. Okay. So. Oh, applicant should print. Or? Applicant, you know, must include. You know, or yeah. Again, we don't want to make that too long. So that, that's all. Yep. But other than that. Um, I think we it cleans up what we asked for. Mm -hmm. We could always amend this again if, if you know this is a uh, a warrant article type of thing. So should we in practice find that it's either of them are uh, you know confusing or need some tweaking? We could do that. Yeah. So um, oh, because the changes to this involved. Uh, the number of plans that they need to provide. So what right. we went, uh, we reduced the number of large sets, um, like the big 24 by 36, from six. Six. Right. I, said, I think you wrote two on here. Two. I said two or three. Yep. So two we more. we need to address the site so, plan subdivision regs uh, to to make those coincide. Yes, or just pull them out altogether. Yeah. And just it's part of the applicant application. Um, uh, application language uh, yeah. unless you think of a reason to, uh, you know you want it to be in in the regs themselves um, so either, either it needs to be edited or removed sure okay and it's section 7.1 that's it I, I've been looking through it um, I really hope I didn't miss one but um, it's application form 7.1 it says six sets full size and then 10 11 by 17 that's not changing it's just the six sets um, yeah. All right. So it's just uh, these two, right? We did do. Yes. For now, we got these two. I, I didn't want to get hung up with the other ones. I just let's get this out the door. Is there any next two? Uh, okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to catch you up there. Is there any further discussion on on these applications? If not, a motion to uh, to uh, approve the new subdivision and site plan applications. Thank you for your work, Don. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. No problem. Are these fillable on the PDFs? <laughs> <laughs> That's the next. Step. Yeah, that is definitely next. Um, what motion are you looking for? A motion right now? Yeah. To to to, to uh, approve the new subdivision and site plan applications. I'll make okay. A okay, I'll make a motion to approve the new site plan. 
Uh, and what was the other part? Subdivision. Subdivision regulations. <laughs> Applications. Applications. I'll Sorry, second. I don't have it written down. I'll second. So we, got a, we have a motion from Mr. Moran to uh, approve the new subdivision and site plan applications in a second by Ms. Mooney. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Sorry, I'm uh, the motion carries 7-0. Uh, Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda. Do you want to make an edit to the 7.1? Do you want to remove it? Do you want to just Not change tonight. it? Uh, I know we need to. Uh, but if we're actually updating the subdivision regulations, I think we have to hold. We have to make sure we address it as a as a specific item on our agenda. Oh, really? Okay. And what I'd like to do is, hopefully, in the next soon, we will uh, we will have a meeting where we make a bunch of all the changes at once. Okay. So that uh, there was a few others that were flagged uh, that we need to get get through this year. Uh, so hopefully, coming up in October. <laughs> So approval of these applications, we're not, they're not going live yet to we make those changes. No, I consider these live. We can always, uh, in the subdivision regs, state plan regs, we can always just uh, wave, wave that part if we have to. Okay. I just didn't know if you wanted to wait until it was all done and just do it at once, or, yep. you know, you wanted to get these, like, put them up online tomorrow. Today. I think it's fine to put them online. I don't think, again, it's nothing substantive other than the number of plant sets. I mean, I even been telling, I knew it was coming down the line, so people always ask, how many big, you know, right. sets you need? Yep. Like two or three. Yep. yep. And if it's something specific, we can always request more. That's, uh, that's on our so purview, too. So does this mean that we won't be getting our little manila envelopes? No, we will. So what we did was we reduced, we used to require six, seven, ten of the large plants, <laughs> but... Yeah. Most people are working off the 11 by 17s, so it's, uh, we're still requiring the 11 by 17s, not requesting so many of the really big ones. They're still there if you want to see them, if you have to see them, because Kevin will keep one set for in the office. Yeah, usually. Keep both, basically. Keep both, yeah. And then the other pieces, you're also going to get them emailed. I mean, you've been getting them emailed. Right. But, you know, very that's... rare that anyone looks at these. <laughs> very rare. Now and then, Sean. It's, it doesn't justify every time there's a change, change another plant set going out, or the big ones going out, you know, six, six of them, them. Yeah, yeah. because of the costs associated to the uh, applicant. Plus, it's used to be in the office. So, uh, I believe you. I believe you. Public comment we, we always reserve time at night for the individual public to come in and, and have. Uh, conversations with us uh, as long as it's not case or application specific there's nobody here tonight so we'll move on from that uh, approval minutes I'm going to request that we table I, I had sent in some edits uh, and I don't think we had a chance to get them into the uh, the drafts that were there I would, I would recommend or uh, I'm gonna move that we table table those for tonight um, I'm open to discussion on it but I, had, I think I had quite a bit of edits for uh, the first two sets at least Mr. Chair, I have a, uh, I have a question. Um, the minutes for August 10th, do they also include the non-public closed door minutes for acceptance? I think I we... I was we, not there at that meeting. We already accepted those. I think we accepted. The, the closed we, door we, ones we, you've we, already yeah. done? Yeah. Okay. And we, we could definitely make sure that we have all our uh, things, but we did seal those minutes at the, at the last meeting. I remember meeting. that, yeah. yeah. I don't know if we ever... Technically approve the minutes. You're correct. We should take a look and see. I'll go back and look and see if we approve them. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, we can seal them. Right. Seal them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you have any questions about the right. Sealed them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, select board, staff board member updates. Uh, we'll start with Miss Jones and work our way around the table. There. I'm good. All set. Just uh, I don't know if anyone else had seen staff or regional had sent something about <clears throat> um, how to do with hate crimes and the increase of that and I don't know if that went out to other people or, or who got that and I didn't actually bring a copy of it but it's um, I, I found it interesting and, and uh, if, I believe Stratford Regional has it uh, posted someplace so but it's just very interesting that the increase of that type of stuff uh, 
really being looked at more and more. So, mm -hmm. what, can can you what communities that? could do with it? Yeah, uh, I'll 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 forward it. To yeah, them. thank you. Thank you. Are you talking about in the area? In the area in general? Pardon me? In the area? Uh, yeah, it's about yeah, New Hampshire generally. Uh-oh. But I'll, I'll follow that. You know, it says a lot. A lot. I realize that too. <laughs> sure, why not, right? Uh, select board well. We have a couple projects going on. We are going to pave, um, and I know it's not good, but there's been a lot of issues with Marston's pro parking lot over there uh, and the fact that people can't park uh, and parking on the roads and everything like this. So it was decided that it was the best, best to pave that area and line it to adequately get the maximum amount of cars on that property safely and securely. So I know it's not the best thing to get it paved, but it was a necessity that uh, felt that was necessary. Uh, we're replacing all the, in the town sand pit area, you want to call it, uh, we're replacing all our covers because they were going bad. They expired their life and had holes in them. So that's a project that'll be taken care of before the winter started. Um, as we all know that Chris Sterndale is leaving. Uh, so uh, we have finalized our final plan for getting his replacement. Uh, we hopefully will have that done by next week. So when we come to the next meeting, we'll be able to tell you and one other side conversation. Uh, when the lady asked tonight, and this is to be open and honest with all you here, you know, uh, when she was asking about recusing, um, I want you to know I do know Mr. Rossberger. Um, I've only seen him once this summer, and that was at the 25th anniversary party. That was with mutual friends on the lake. I haven't stepped on his property besides the sidewalk in probably over six or seven years, but because of my location, being on the Lake Association, being active in the town, I do know a lot of people, so I believe that was actually referred to me, but I have no, we are not in any way, you know, have that type of relationship. So it's just sort of quince that we just know the same people. I think, and so that's why I'm not gonna recuse myself from this if I felt like there was a need to. And I felt my relationship was closer and it would interfere with what, what I was doing here. Uh, with all my experience, I would actually, and I hope you guys would know that from my experience, that I would actually pull myself from this instead of making a decision that would be impartial. Yeah. And like I said, it's, it's a personal so, call. We'll, um, if and I understand if you're okay with it. Just it's case a weird question. No one usually comes up and asks sure. a direct question like that. And there has to be a reason. <laughs> yeah. else, and I'm looking around. I know where most of you all live. And... <laughs> Like you said. The same you, people wanted Thank to you. know the credentials of the engineer. Uh, yeah. Well, let's yeah. So, but that's it. We're uh, just uh, I just wanted to dial back to that. that right. So, I but just I, wanted to be clear if you're okay with it, so. I think if you're here next meeting or if you're not, that I'll just kind of repeat what was what was said again, just because case specific and, and just no, no, I wasn't being case specific. I'm just. But thank just you for clarifying who she was talking about. I well, I but just want you guys to know. Again, we can only speculate and. Uh, Oh. And again, it's small towns, so we tend to people know a lot of people, and there could be perception that maybe not be that's not correct. Had to be a select one to not know a lot of people. So other than that, um, we have a board meeting tomorrow night uh, to go over uh, some things for the select board. So we're meeting quite often now. Sleep in here tonight. Um, what? Sleep in here tonight. Well, I was here last night for the board select meeting. Well, we didn't have a quorum, um, so that meeting stuff is being pushed off to this meeting and. Our public hearings being pushed off to another date, so it's, just, uh, it's a lot more time and effort that's going involved right now. So, okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, just a reminder: October fifth, which I think is next Wednesday at this point. October is right around the corner. Uh, we have that site walk on uh, Stevens Hill Road. Um, if you can't make it, please uh, send myself and uh, Kevin an email just so we're aware, so we try to see if we're going to have a quorum or not. Uh, um, I think it was set for five o'clock. Five. Five. Yeah, because yeah, it's getting what dark. What night is it? Wednesday to October fifth. Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to keep things on Wednesdays, but we may, <laughs> as we're getting into the uh, the dark season, we might have to start moving stuff to you know weekends or earlier, to, as as the case may be. Uh, I do want to make sure we get we keep uh, an eye on the agendas and our, our time as we're getting to the end of the year. We're gonna have to start looking at zoning uh, amendments for warrant articles. And also make sure we don't lose sight of any of the uh, subdivision changes that we've been talking about to make sure we get 
those uh, do a public hearing and, and uh, move forward. So I'll work with uh, with Kevin to see what our schedules are looking like coming up and try to get those get a get, get that onto a, a night that will be here. It looks like time will will work uh, to try not to take up another night for everybody. Uh, or maybe we come in half an hour early and do a public hearing for that part of it. it start the meeting at seven afterwards. That's yeah. I did just see there was a the email that came out that from NH, New Hampshire DOT talking about the bridge replacement on 152, and it, it it's seeking I guess input from uh, multiple levels, but including the planning board. So I would say if you have specific comments, uh, please send them to me. I'll consolidate them and I'll send it from. The chair position to uh, official view to get consolidated with with any other town comments uh, on that. Um, the conservation commission has uh, wrapped up the river testing program called VRAP Volunteer River Assessment Program. Again, we had four volunteers from the community, and we were able to test twice a month from June through the month of September. And we were one of the few communities that did do testing more frequently than once a month in the state of New Hampshire. And the commission is going to be picking up trash on 156 and 152. I think it's next week. Um, this weekend? Like, no, it's usually on Monday, like after drive time. But just to get that information out there that we do. I was just going to volunteer on a Saturday, but I can't. Well, do just don't throw I the trash out every now time between. they go by my house. Thank you. <laughs> so I might yes, thank thank you. Uh, thank you to the commission for. for so, what all rivers that. do you oh, test? Oh. What rivers were being um, tested? On the North River in two locations, yeah. McCrillis yeah. and um, uh, Freeman Hall, down okay. by where Larry used to. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly. And then also Smoke Street, where that development was going to go in. Mm -hmm. Okay. The well, Little River? Little River, yes. yes. Over there. Okay. That's a very pristine little river. Well, so is the North River, too. Yeah, the state relies the on the biggest that. rivers in town, so it would be. I'm sorry? The two of the biggest rivers in town, so. Oh, and very important to the watershed. Yep. Yeah. Very important. Oh. Yeah, the state relies on that volunteer commitment to uh, obviously they can't monitor with the staff that they have the, all those locations, but they, the data is key to identify tre long term trends as well as they can see if there's a spot uh, change that it, it will work on it quickly but. the uh, another comment about the smoke um, street site little river uh, one of the bat studies was done at that site and they found quite a few different species of bats mm -hmm. just in that area cool. that that was on um, every river advisory committee got the grant to do the bat study so that was very cool mm -hmm. very cool thank you uh, Ms. Uh, that's it. thank you Mr. Haney. uh yes I just want to reiterate something that I had sent out uh, I believe it was l late last week, Thursday. Uh, there is a training opportunity. Um, this is just a particularly good one. It's land use law. Um, so it's very applicable to what you all do here and in some of your other boards, right, conservation. Um, so, um, and because of the most recent change in legislation, these things are now open available to alternates as well. So you all are welcome to, to join them. However, everybody here, if you do want to do this, it is a $70 fee. I don't know if the town covers that or not, if you have to do that at your own, ex own expense, but um, it is a, a registration fee of $70. It's Saturday, October 15th from 9 to 3 p.m. Um, and this is an online event, so you can do it in your PJs if you want to. Um, but it's you know mostly an all-day event. Uh, there's a bunch of different speakers. Um, some are live, some are pre-recorded. Um, but you know, it's there's definitely a few things in there that everybody can benefit, myself included. Right? Land use law is complex and it's always changing. So, giving yourself a, a good foundation um, of, under, of understanding, um, you just build on it over a career. <laughs> That's yeah. just how it is. So if, anybody's, if anybody's interested in that, please email myself at CC Kevin just so we have, because we'll have to approve the uh, approve the expenditure. I think I'm sure we have money in the uh, training budget part of our budget because I don't think we've used any of it uh, this year. So, um, so I see I, I would foresee funds being available. So if it's that you're interested in, or would like to attend, please just email me and we'll uh, make sure that's all squared away. 
Sorry? Six hours. Oh, six hours. Thank you. Yeah, it's nine to three. Nine to three. Okay. Who's, who's doing that? Oh, it's the New Hampshire um, uh, Municipal Association is, is the lead organization um, and the, and the new, new Hampshire Office of Planning and Development. So, you know, New Hampshire MA has a lot of um, good people that um, work with them, consult to them, and they do a lot of the speaking. The planning office obviously has a greater interest in this. I, I, I talk about the Municipal Association because if you go to their, I think it's like their newsletter or their blog, it, it's a great resource. I, I go to it all the time. I mean, my experience for almost 20 years was in Massachusetts land use law, right? So I'm learning a lot up here. And it's just, whenever I Google search a question about New Hampshire land use law, I tend to end up back at some type of blog that they have posted about, you know, ways to handle writing good conditions or, um, you know, how to make a good uh, motion. Things like that, right? Like there's there's ways to do things. There's legal ways to do things. There's good practices and stuff. So um, I have just found myself ending up on their, you know, whatever it is. They're, like I said, their blog or their, their newsletter. So um, could we get a link yeah. sent to us? Is that Sorry, possible? is it possible to have a link sent? Yep, yep. I I sent it out last week. I'll send it out again because uh, I am bringing it up again, and I'll make sure that you all see it, and I'll make sure that I know that this is what we talked okay. about. But also yeah. the blog part of it too. Oh, to that. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Yep. Is there any further, uh, this will be you. So I see we have plans set. This side. Yeah. Did, uh, Lynn, did you happen to get a chance to look at it? Yeah, okay. I know <laughs> we didn't talk about it. I was like, I know. I meant to remind you too, so. Escape right, me. I'm sorry. I will get okay. on it immediately. Well, so it's for uh, Big Bump. So just haven't had a chance to review if the conditions are bad. Yeah, well, yeah. Last time we talked, it was because of the, the conditions were so like they, wrong. Sure. Like 11, you know, and, and some of the stuff I wasn't familiar with. Yep. Uh, we discussed we just having a look at it. Sure, yeah. We'll make sure we get that. If you can, that we, we get to that for the, the 12th. Yeah. That'd be great. Anything else? For us? No. Um, uh, I'm, Motion to adjourn, anybody? I so move. Second, anyone? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, everybody. You have a great night.